we've been telling clients to keep safe, keep defensive. In fact, as we entered the Q2 of this year, we believe that the risk of recession has increased because now the outlook is being further clouded by uh, a further tightening in lending standards amongst banks. And of course, let's not forget about the recent liquidity stress amongst smaller banks in the US. So from our perspective, uh, we ascribe you know, a close to 80 to 90% risk chance of a recession within the next 12 months. And even among the recession checklists that we normally monitor, a majority of the checklists are now flashing rate. I think, if I'm not wrong, it's 11 out of 15. And some of the early indicators, for example, like a decline in temporary help, that tends to be an early warning sign for a waning labor market, that has also started to uh, decrease as well. So net-net, telling clients to you know, be focused on quality, be in bonds, and at expense of equities. So we entered the year being quite uh, conservative, i.e. overweight bonds and underweight uh, uh, equities, and within equities itself, our preference for China. Okay, I hear you, Audrey, but uh, this rebalance uh, from equities to quality fixed income, stress on the word quality, uh, I would assume you would be uh, telling clients you probably uh, you should probably lock in what you can while you can, that is, uh, go long duration. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, in fact, we are asking clients to secure the IPO because a central bank hits a peak in the rate hiking cycle, we're probably going to see use declining given that, you know, as the monetary policy tightens, growth outlook will necessarily weaken. And that means bond yields, especially at the longer end of bond yields, may start to waver and come off. In fact, we've already seen a peak in uh, uh, the US 10-year Treasury bond yield uh, now already. And even the two-year bond yield is starting to waver from the recent highs of almost 5% uh, to now four, just over 4% today. So certainly, you know, uh, given that we're approaching a peak of the Fed hiking cycle, uh, one of the things clients can do is to really lock in their income, lock in their yield before yields start to turn around again. Part of that quality space is high-grade U.S. dollar bonds. So this would be offshore paper, especially Asian offshore paper. I need to ask you, though, what about currency risk? Because if recession is coming, if interest rates are coming, that likely is going to mean a softer dollar as well, no? Uh, yes. Uh, in our mind, we expect to see U.S. dollar softening, uh, softening over the next 6 to 12 months, uh, which is why I think if we look at the overall environment for bonds, we do have a preference for U.S. dollar uh, denominated Asian currency, uh, Asian U.S. dollar bonds, because although it is denominated in U.S. dollar, but I think a key point for Asian dollar bonds is that uh, it's being supported by very similar, uh, well, robust as well as easing policy in China, because about more than 50% of the issuers in the Asian U.S. dollar bonds landscape is actually come from Chinese issuers. And we've only just recently, you know, just started seeing uh, China easing, easing their COVID-19 restrictions back in late December, and of course, they just did a triple R cut recently as well. And on top of that, uh, the overall growth agenda by the authority is quite robust, coming in at 5% growth target in the most recent NPC. Uh, so we do, we do believe that that's a segment that clients, uh, as well as investors, can be focused on, in addition to a very attractive view and offer in the in excess of 6%.